So why do you say that your friend Julie was being clingy in the beginning? Well, I mean, in the beginning, it started out um, where she would call all day, all night. She started going to the kids' school. She just, she started okay. doing a lot. How did you two meet? Work. We met at work on lunch break. Okay. And that was the worst decision. So basically, <laughs> it was, uh, so I think I was late for a break that uh -huh. day. Um, I was actually on the phone with my doctor and she stood there in front of me until I was finished. And she was like, hey, you wanna go to lunch together? And I was like, I don't know. So that day I actually didn't go, I went the following day. So mm -hmm. we, we met on break and she has been with me since break. It's interesting that on the first day <laughs> since break, okay? Yeah. It's interesting that on the very first day you had some reservation. What, what were you feeling on that day? I don't know, she's just, she was just weird to me. Um, I don't know, she was in class talking about her cat and she had to go take it to daycare and she, okay, so well, let me back up. <laughs> she was talking about Molly and I was like, how old is Molly? I'm like, Molly can meet my nieces. She was like, Molly's a cat. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'm like, oh, damn. <laughs> uh -huh. So that plan, like, was your first question. Yeah, first so plan. I was like, okay. She's just different. She would even sing songs in class and get mad when people told her to, like, be quiet. It's just, she's just really different. I'm a, I, got, I can't lie. I got friends that are eccentric like that. They, you know, my best friend, Trey, he doesn't like when I bring those friends around. But, like, All I'm right. somebody who don't judge. And I'm like, yeah, you be you. You know, if your cat named Molly and you think she a child, great. Let's go for it. Right. But, you know, but I understand that's not for everyone else. I get that. Right. Okay. So, you told my producer that she tried to dress like you? Man. <laughs> yes. So. And she did her hair like you as well? Oh, yes. You, you see. Like, she never wore her hair like this. Julie came back with curls and... I just tried to ignore it. I was flattered at first. Yeah. I'm like, somebody, well, okay, I'm popping, right? No, she's crazy. <laughs> so why did you let Julie move in with you if all this was happening? She was sleeping in her car. And so basically, I just didn't want to see her out struggling and homeless. And who else was living with you at the time? My then husband and children. Okay, so she moved in with you and your family. She okay, was... yeah. So this caused an issue for you in your home? Yes. So my children were like, when is she leaving? She's asking me personal questions. She- Hold on, she's <laughs> asking your kids personal questions. What do you mean? So my son, I have a 17 year old. Uh -huh. He started dating. She would ask him things about him and his girlfriend. Is he having sex? Um, <laughs> I'm a rapper, right? She kept getting deposits for me to perform and didn't even tell me to go oh, perform. That's that. Got it. When you hear her, you'll understand. But well, no. you said we better hear from her, so I think there's no better time than to, to meet Julie. Everyone, please welcome Julie to the show. <laughs> How you doing, Julie? Nice. Have a hug? <laughs> nice to meet you. You look very pretty. Thank you. And different style. <laughs> <laughs> Today. Okay, for that. So, so how does it feel to hear your former best friend say these things? Um, it's very hurtful to me. Girl, bud. Um, it's really hard that we're in this place. There she go. It's fake. She is like the sister that I never had, you know? Um, I do have siblings, but I don't have a relationship with them. Hold on, we got to ping really quickly. That's the damn tattoo. Listen, she got my name tattooed on her. Y'all, we didn't discuss this. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I, I, I'm looking at it now. What do you... <laughs> That's my name, Avian. Hold on, okay. You got... I why did explain. you get... Yes, please, explain, because... Explain it. You got her name tattooed on you? I did. Name, nobody I did. asked her to do it. It's my only tattoo, right? Um... And I know what she it sounds like. Hell, like I'm admitted. a fan of hers, you know. A she, fan. It was kind of like to show her that I was like team her. She misconstrued it, you know. I thought she would be happy about it. Why? But it made me look crazy. Let me explain something. She has people thinking that we have been in a relationship. That tattoo really made everybody like, okay, I know y'all was I'm like, no the fuck we would. <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, it does send a signal of right. when I was when I was 22, 
I was young and out there, and I and I put an ex boyfriend's name on me, but it was my ex boyfriend. We was together, and I exactly. I was crazy in love. Mm -hmm. And but, she just crazy. Oh my god! Hold on, we got another ping. See my wife, this type of stuff. Avion moved me to the mountains, and the see this right here. Let me tell y'all something. Some of my family is on her page, psychopath, and they called me. They was like, "Hey, Deuce, did you see that?" I said, well, I "See that dumb." Why did you call her your wife? Crazy. People do it all the time. No, no, the hell yeah, they don't. Like, I know what it sounds like. Okay. I sound crazy. You but are. I promise, I'm not crazy. I would tell people that we're in a relationship, but I know we're not. So. <sighs> you are crazy, bro. Like. <laughs> You got me at a loss for words yeah, right now, and that's never me. So you were telling people that you were in a relationship? Mm -hmm. Yes, they would stop and ask me. They was like, congratulations on your engagement. I said, to who? Hold because you're smiling about this, and I need to understand where did this come happened. from? So, okay, so I love hard, right? Um, Don't love me that hard. When <laughs> I care about somebody, you know, I'm, I'm just like, I'm all about that person. May I have gone about it the wrong way? Yes. You did. But everything that I did, it was kind of like, it wasn't like in an obsessive way. It was more so like, hey. That ain't true. Um, I care about you. You know, I'm teaming you. I would never do anything to hurt her. Um, but it was more so like, hey, I thought it was the, you know, the, the wife okay, thing. Julie, I thought it so, was like funny. No, that's psycho. Listen, I asked you a million times to just be you, and I was like, listen, we, we can be cool as long as you chill. Why, why, why you couldn't chill? Oh, that was my way of being chill. Girl, bye. <laughs> well, Julie, um, my producers are telling me right now they got a confession from you for Avion. Avion, I confess, I did dress like you. Imitation is just a serious form of flattery. Yes, it's true, I did create the social media page but it was a fan page. I took your photos, I created an Instagram account so I could show my dedication and get followers, you know, to see that I'm a fan of yours. I did tell people that your kids are my kids. I love it like they're my own. I posted on social media that you are my wife. I did it because I love you, not because I'm obsessed or anything like that. I got this tattoo of your name because I'm a fan of yours, I wanted to show you I support you. So what better way than with a tattoo? I'm not obsessed with you. I just love you and care about you and support you. That's all. Uh, girl, f I know. I, I don't even want to do this with your dumb ass no more. That's stupid. That reaction makes sense. You can understand why she's upset. You just confessed to starting a profile under her and also saying that you told people that her kids were yours. Okay, so that's true. I'm gonna go step by step. The kids part, right? I'm African, and in African culture, um, your friends' kids are your kids. Your sister's kids are your kids, you know? I understand um, the villi village mentality. This is our yes, tribe. Yes, I get it. It was in that sense. I don't have children of my own. Her kids, I felt like you know, I would do anything for them too since yeah. they are an extension of her. Got it. Um, it was in that sense. Okay, this one I gotta say to this. I understand that there is a justification in your mind for each of these things, and I'm gonna have Avion come back out in a second, but there's something called intention and there's something called impact. Right. And I guess I understand your intention is to do one thing, but the impact that it has on Avion or anyone else is the opposite. Your intention is to show you I love you and I admire you and I think you're amazing. The impact is you're invading my space and you're making me uncomfortable. And so the lesson I would have for you is as you walk away from here, understand boundaries, intention, and impact. You stop communicating and you started surprising and nobody likes to be surprised. I do believe you owe her an apology for those things. Do you agree? Sure. What part? I say all of it. I just told you. Either you can learn the lesson here or you can have a, this situation happen again. Can we have her come back out? I get how you reacted, girl. I get it. Thank you for coming back out and, and dealing with this. You know, she the... can save it. And let me tell you why. Because I was watching. She didn't even know what part to apologize for. You admitted on camera you had been telling people my children were your kids. She kept lying to me. She kept making fake pages. I don't believe she's sorry. 
Got it. And I then got it. I, got I don't it. want to hear nothing to that tattoo covered up anyway. Got it. Well, I'll tell you this. You don't got to hear it or receive it, but you Thank should finish you. with that apology. I apologize um, sincerely for the negative impact I had on your life. I made people think you were my wife. I really sincerely what apologize for that. What about this money part? That. Because she's saying that you took money under she her did. for bookings. What is that? Um, I don't recall. Okay. She's a lot. Let me okay. tell you, people well, would stop me. Uh -huh. Like, hey, we booked you for a show. You didn't show up. And I'm like, what? Let me see the page. Her page and her um, cash app. Okay. So you have proof of that? Yeah. So she has the proof. Mm -hmm. So it's either you own it now. She has proof. So you didn't do it. See what I'm saying? So the thing is, is that what happened here is that there is a pattern. And so this has now went from past intention and impact to now... I'm doing actually things that could harm you and harm your brand and your business and your family. So for you, I would not contact her again. I'd keep your distance. And I would make sure I watch my behavior going forward. Because this type of behavior here, we have now can see a pattern. If you ever do this again, it can end you up in jail. So watch yourself, OK? Watch yourself, seriously. I'm just, I'm, this is Big Brother trying to warn you, girl trying to warn you. I'm not trying to insult you. I'm not trying to do anything but warn you. Let this be the first and last, because she did the kindest thing of bringing you on a show to kind of talk to you. This could have got a lot worse for you. You feel me? She don't believe it. I know. I wish you the best of luck. Protect yourself, and I wish both of y'all the best of luck, all right? Thank you. Yeah. Want more Unlocked Phones, DNA Reveals, and Family Drama? Then make sure you're subscribed to the Karamo Show YouTube.